But we have to finance and housing authority too. And, uh, <laughs> All righty, I want to first of all say good evening to everyone. At this point, <clears throat> we're going to have nothing to report out from the uh, study session, so I will go ahead and entertain a motion uh, to close the study session. That is my motion. I second. Second by Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco. Any objections? See none, so move. All right, at this point, we're going to go into the invocation followed by the flag salute. Not turn it, Dr. Flores, the Bon Park resident, is here. Oh, come on up here. Dr. Flores, a renowned... Uh, Professor over at Azusa Pacific and a product of the City of Ball Park from schools from elementary all the way to high school And he's an excellent uh, role model if you get an opportunity You have to visit his church the Church of the Redeemer that's located on Monterey between uh, Ramona Boulevard and Frazier. And Frazier that's right. Okay. Got it. All right. Thank you. Doc. Yes, sir Thanks, uh, we're, uh, we're gonna to ask stay. everyone to please stand. Sorry about that. Thank you, Pastor. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious God, we uh, come before you uh, tonight and we in invite, invoke your presence into this meeting uh, this season as we remember your great love for us through Christ Jesus. We're mindful of the hope, love, peace, and joy that comes through this season. May our citizens and our community uh, be healed and encouraged during this time by the lights, by our actions toward one another, and by participation, Lord, in various services. Lord, we ask your wisdom tonight, Lord, as council entertains, Lord, proposals and opportunities in which we can honor you and honor the, uh, the citizens of Baldwin Park. We pray, God, that you give us your wisdom, Lord. Um, consider uh, the privilege we have to represent on behalf of this, the city, Lord. We ask all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Flores. At this point, I will ask everyone to please face the flag. Put your right hand over your heart. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Uh, <coughs> before we go to roll call, I just want to, at this point, open up the, uh, excuse me, I'd like to open up the Baldwin Park City Council special meeting today, December 13th, 2017. The time is 725, along with the Finance and the Housing Authority, as well as a portion uh, the regular agenda from the successor agency. All right, so at this point, uh, Council Member wish to close on any, any, anyone? No? All right, at this point, I will ask, oh, I want to actually excuse, I'll make a motion to excuse both the, the city treasurer and the city clerk. Uh, both of them had called in and they're not feeling well. So at this point, from Maria Contras and also Ms. I second that. So there's second. Is any objections? See not so move. So at this point, we'll ask our deputy uh, deputy city clerk if you wish to take roll call. All right. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Council. Council Member Rubio. Present. Council Member Garcia. Here. Council Member Baca. Present. Mayor Pro Tem Pacheco. Present. Mayor Lozano. Present. Thank you. All righty. Well, first of all, before we, we begin, I want to just uh, thank all the individuals that are here tonight. Of course, this is this for us. It, it makes history in the city of Baldwin Park. Cannabis. The, the Californians have voted for it in several uh, uh, elections statewide, and obviously they made that very clear. And in Baldwin Park, we want to be a part uh, of this particular uh, venue because I think it'll be. Uh, a win-win situation for the entire community, of course, and spe specifically the three million dollars that we're looking at as a, as a potential projection uh, for the city of Baldwin Park. 
want to ask everyone that we're not going to make the de full decision of all uh, the, the suggested uh, amount that we're looking at, possibly uh, 15, possibly more than that. Uh, today, we will be choosing 10, and we will have a special meeting on December the 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, to consider, uh, to actually, yes, make a decision to consider uh, the rest at that specific time. And of course, uh, we, there is rumored that the state may extend the actual uh, time itself, but we are going to meet the uh, 2018 uh, December 31st deadline. That's what we're, so in essence, the city of Bond Park will be rendering decision, uh, final decision this coming uh, this coming Monday. So just to let everyone know, um, okay. that is in particular the residents of Bond Park have asked that we kind of slow down, kind of look at everything and assess, and that, that is exactly what we're doing right now. Uh, so there is no immediate rush for us to announce uh, every one of the particular um, venues that have applied here uh, th this evening. So I just want to let everyone know. The plan as well, we are going to uh, re actually the cannabis will, category will be on its own, then we will have a, a subtitle for the actual uh, distribution. And I believe there's a total of five applicants, so we'll take a look at those separately because, again, uh, this is all new to us, and so we're looking at everything very closely, so that's what we requested. So I want to let the general audience uh, know what we are doing here at this point. All right, yes, yes, Councilmember Monica Garcia. Thank you. I know that the item is uh, item number eight, so we're going to get to that. Yes. But um, I am in favor of approving, issuing conditional approvals to all applicants who have met the city's criteria. And, um, you know, there is a number of those, but I, that is my uh, position. I, I would favor that position over the 10. And I just wanted to make that statement. All right. All right. And then we'll, we'll go, once we get into that particular area of the agenda, we'll address okay. what uh, Council Member um, Monica Garcia has requested is to consider that all the applicants that have been fully approved uh, in the specific categories and, and, and accordance to the City of Baldwin Park be approved. So that will be looked at once we get into that particular area. All right. So uh, at, at this point, one more, please. Yes. Oh, sorry about that. Yes. <coughs> All right, just been um, in, informed that there is a total of 10 distributions that have applied. So again, those are going to be a separate uh, subcategory in order for us to, uh, to review, and I believe we're going to take that up on the 18th. Or is, uh, go ahead, legal counsel. Yes, Mr. Mayor, matter of a point of clarification. Uh, there are five uh, that have applied for distribution only, oh, and that's going to be the separate subcategory that the council has decided to uh, explore. But there are also an additional five, approximately, that have asked for distribution, cultivation, and manufacturing. And can you point out which ones those are? I mean, um, are we going to let's do it when we get to item what, number eight? Yeah, yeah. Let me let me go ahead and go with the actual agenda first, and then we'll go over to that particular area. You're right with you. Got things mixed up here. All right. So uh, at this point. We're going to do a presentation, and that is the presentation will be recognizing our former vice mayor. We, this is a rotating position for the vice mayor of the city of Baldwin Park. So the presentation will go uh, to our, our council member now, which was the vice mayor of the city of Baldwin Park at the last meeting. This uh, plaque represents the, uh, the, uh, the, the actual service that you provided for a year long. So on behalf of the city of Baldwin Park, I want to thank you. Our vice mayor, Susan Rubio, let's give her a great hand. I want to, as I mentioned, the, actual, the vice mayor is, is a rotating position every year uh, that takes on the responsibility when I'm out of town or wherever the case may be, and that person becomes the mayor. So at this point, I want to present you with the plaque. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank Have you. some words. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. Well, it's always a great honor to represent our community, no matter in what capacity, but of course, I was honored to do so for that whole year. And so thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah, let's get our picture. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, that's right. I forgot. Hey, el taconazo. And for those that, of you that weren't here last week, and to welcome uh, Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco to the position of yes. Mayor Potem. That's right. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for that, and I hope to work well with all my council colleagues as the mayor pro tem and represent the mayor when you're out of town on vacation or wherever it may be absolutely i actually emailed you about 10 different tasks so they're doing they're doing no later the next uh monday and that's it, and that's for real all right so at this point that's the only presentation that we have uh we'll now go ahead and open up the public communication so anyone wishes to speak you have approximately three minutes if you could mention your name so i am Open it up for anyone wishing to speak on any item and or even on the cannabis as well, or distribution. Good evening. Good evening, uh, good evening Mayor. Good evening, and, uh, sir. <clears throat> members of the City Council, my name is uh, Sergio Torres. Um, I am the CEO of Medical Grade Farms uh, BP and wanted to take this opportunity to let you know what uh, we feel sets us apart uh, from uh, you know majority of the applicants uh, at this time. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we are local boys. Uh, maybe not raised uh, here in the city of BP, uh, but from just southwest of here uh, off the 710 freeway. Um, my colleagues themselves uh, have spent much time here within the confines of the city. Uh, my Mr. Acosta, uh, whose aunt lived and owned a business here within the city, uh, so he spent much time here as well as my colleague Mr. Vega, uh, who as well uh, accompanied uh, the brother of uh, the late Mr. Marco Farball, oftentimes on weekends, and you know had a little time with him and spent time as much as possible. Um, as far as our group, uh, I like to say unlike a majority of the entities uh, within the industry, uh, we are 100% Latino owned. Uh, so I think that is a major part of the benefit that we bring uh, to the community. Um, Moses, Enrique, and I uh, have known each other for many years. Uh, we went to junior high together in the city of Huntington Park, uh, graduated from Bell High School. Uh, so the, the bond really does run deep within us as well. Um, <clears throat> We did graduate from local universities as well. Uh, I from UCLA, uh, Mr. Vega from Cal State Long Beach, and we've always dreamed of returning to communities such as ours or like ours uh, in order to go ahead and change the face of, of our industry. Um, we have been involved in this industry since 1999, and for the better part of those 18 years, uh, working with other non-minority owned entities, and that's why we want to take this opportunity uh, to see if we can put our foot in the door and uh, move forward as best as possible. Uh, we have this opportunity, again, uh, which is something, uh, let alone to better ourselves, but also for the betterment of the community, which is one of our main points of, uh, of contention with, with the fact that, you know, how we come from, where we come from, and what we want to do as far as the city is concerned. Um, lastly, uh, although we did not matriculate from uh, these uh, very city streets, we were bred, again, locally. And uh, I would hope that the council uh, will support a business uh, whose ownership uh, is reflective of the constituents uh, that it serves. Uh, with that being said, thank you so very much, and I want to thank you. Thank you very much. All right, moving along with public communication. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here. My name is Todd Hill. I'm with BKWC. That's Bud King's Weed Club Cooperative Corporation. Uh, we are also an applicant for distributorship, which unfortunately, it sounds like it might be tabled tonight. I almost want to cry. But at that said, um, a couple of things that we'd like to share that set us apart as well. Uh, we are local. Uh, I'm a resident of Baldwin Park itself, uh, college educated out of Los Angeles. Uh, we are 
very, very familiar with operating in heavily regulated industries. So one of the things that's going to set the future apart from the past is the level of regulation uh, that will be required to comply with. And that compliance is critical for all parties. It's critical for any partner that the city chooses to allow to operate within its confines. It's critical for anyone who uh, is very concerned with making sure that uh, any activities here don't continue to contribute to the gray or illicit marketplace. Uh, we have that expertise. Uh, we have expertise dealing with not only Lori Ajax in the development of the state regulations personally, uh, but we also have expertise in helping get uh, not only Prop 64 passed, uh, but Measure M passed in Los Angeles. We have experience dealing with uh, the CDFA uh, for cultivation, uh, with the Department of Consumer Affairs. Uh, so we believe that there is a very important consideration in all of this. And, and forgive me, I'm not used to really speaking in front of a lot of people, so I might sound a little bit nervous because I am. But the reality is that um, the future will require a level of discipline that the past has not. And we do believe, and we believe that we have shown by our application that we are fully prepared uh, to engage in a productive um, and stress-free uh, manner in operation of the city. We hope that you consider our application with vigor. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Anyone else wishing to speak under public communication? Step up to the mic. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor Lozano and the rest of the City Council. First and foremost, uh, I would like to thank you all for giving us the opportunity to uh, establish our licensed legal cannabis business here in the city of Baldwin Park. My name is Jefferson Liu. I'm the CEO of Cloud Control Inc., one of the applicants here. Uh, I just wanted to let you know a little bit more about ourselves. We've been an established cannabis brand for four years under the name Herbsmith, and we are different than other people. We are a crafted cannabis brand based on artisanal uh, products. And uh, myself as an entrepreneur, I graduated from UCLA in economics and labor workplace study. Uh, I believe in something a little bit different. I'm actually really excited to employ uh, the residents of your city because we are a handcrafted brand. We've grown organically and slowly. We haven't taken the shortcuts and uh, built on capital and machinery and cut out the people. Uh, we actually believe that to make a successful company grow, you need the support of the people in your company. And we plan to hire many of your residents and train them to be craftsmen in our brand. And beyond that, uh, I'm a firm believer in living wage, having been a labor workplace studies minor. Uh, a living wage is key to making people have a life and not have to work a second job. If you know, you're bringing us in here so people can have that kind of opportunity. Uh, we make edibles, we make concentrates, even our dishwasher makes $13 an hour. And that's what I want to bring to your city and to your people. So uh, we are Cloud Control Inc. And thank you very much for considering us. All right, thank you very much. Uh, all right, at this point, anyone else? Good evening. Good, Good evening, sir. council members, mayor. My name is Kevin Halloran. I'm the chief financial officer of Cushy Punch Inc. We are a leading edibles company in California. Our products are sold in over 1,300 stores. What we can offer this city and what we believe is a very strong partnership between ourselves and yourselves is the ability to employ, at a minimum, 60 residents of Baldwin Park. As a manufacturer, we are a labor-intensive uh, business, and we are committed to creating quality jobs for those residents. I also want to point out one uh, element of our application, which there may have been some confusion as I understand it now. That relates to the property that we have under assignment. And earlier today, I understand those documents were provided to the Planning Commission. So I just wanted to clear that up if that was at all a consideration in your deliberations tonight. I want to applaud you all on a final note for taking this step forward. It is important not only for your residents, 
It's important for the Southern California region, and it's important for the state of California. Thank you very, very much for your consideration of our application. All right, thank you very much. Moving along with public communication. Please state your name. You have approximately three minutes. Oh, my God. Good evening. Good evening, sir. My name is Rogelio Magaña Castillo. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of uh, Rancho Adelanto Development Enterprises. I'm not going to talk about the cannabis operation and would like to uh, talk about a little bit something else. Uh, behind me is my team, my bosses, my incredible team, both in the cannabis world, but more importantly in the land development world. Uh, Dr. John Wayne Nee, uh, he is... Uh, the inventor of a green construction company that I'm going to employ uh, and deploy here in the United States for the first time uh, ever. Thank you to Mr. Gustavo Romo, who is your development uh, director, and he brought me to this wonderful community, and I think uh, I am ready to both operate a very legitimate, very concise, very well-organized cannabis operation, one which I will invite everyone here who, if I am selected, uh, I will collaborate with them. I bring to the table uh, the partnership of Dr. John Wayne Nee. In addition, like I mentioned last week, I'm also partners with Dr. Charles Hensley. Together we have a broad network of, of pharmaceutical, medical <coughs> grade entities who are ready to work with us both on distribution, on collaboration. <coughs> I think we're in a point where we can make a big difference uh, socially. Uh, we have the platform via uh, uh, many, many uh, ways, but specifically, I guess, the platform I'm going to use is Desilu Productions. Desilu Productions is, as you know, the owner of Star Trek and many other things. He's, it's owned by Dr. Charles Hensley. The plan is to start a grassroots uh, movement to make everyone aware of the incredible benefits, not only the lucrative amount of money we're going to make, but a Mr. Tuttle, I guess, became famous on Facebook. I don't know who Mr. Tuttle is, but uh, whoever he is, we could educate him about cannabis and about the benefits. Mayor, I think that the comments should be addressed to, to the okay, council. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Re refrain from using uh, individuals' names. Oh, but I go did ahead. not that's know fine. that. I apologize. Fine. Thank you. Uh, Councilman Thank you. Rubio. Uh, I invite those nayhayers of the misinformed individuals that do not know the the real gem behind cannabis it will cure many things and i invite everyone to to join this movement uh the recreational side is always going to be there and i have 15 seconds for that i will uh hope to invite my team to come and talk i know they're a little shy I have my operators, I have the entire team, engineering, architects, et cetera. I wish all of you cultivators, distributors in this industry the best of luck. All right, thank you very much. much. All right, at this point, we'll with public communication. Anyone wishing to speak, please state your name. You have approximately three minutes. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Rob Catherman. I'm here representing uh, WNF International. Uh, it's our pleasure to be here this evening and part of your uh, historical process here in the city of Baldwin Park. I simply wanted to note one thing, however. Uh, we have uh, designed a new uh, 45,000 square foot state of the art building for an existing truck yard on Elton Street. And uh, the terms of the development agreement require us to start immediately paying the fees based on a building that will not yet exist for the next uh, eight or nine months. So we would ask if we are select, fortunate enough to be selected in this process that that fact be taken into consideration. And thank you all thank you very so much. very much. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I'll say that at the end. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Hello, Mayor and City okay. Council. Um, my name is Marco Perez. I'm the CFO of VRD, along with my partner, business partner for over 10 years, Ren Yonayama. And I just want to highlight, first of all, thank you for considering us in the application process. 
Um, I think I want to highlight the aspect that what we can bring to Baldwin Park is years of experience. We started off like with four lights. I don't know if you guys have learned a lot of what that means and tiny, tiny, you know, um, operation, but now we do over 500 lights. We've slowly grown. We've tried to innovate every step of the way. You know, I've worked in the hydroponics industry for over 10 years, so I'm really keen on learning the new technologies and the new ways to make things more efficiencies, more efficient, pardon. And I think that, of course, you know, we want to be successful and we're going to be successful, and I love the idea of working here. But I think our ultimate goal at VRD is to really bring, make Baldwin Park the epicenter of high quality cannabis, where people aren't going to just talk about Los Angeles, they're not going <clears> to <throat> talk about San Francisco, you know, people are going to know that you can get the best quality products at Baldwin Park, and I think that is our ultimate objective here. Thank you very much. All right, thank, thank you very much. Uh, good evening, council members. Uh, I'm Scott Russo. I'm the general counsel for Rookley, the application for one of the distribution uh, uh, agreements. Uh, a couple things. I understand that you're going to be dealing with this on the 18th, so I'll save some time for that. Uh, what I want to point out is on the application for Rookley, we do have an agreement with the <laughs> United Food Commercial Workers, so we'll be pre paying prevailing wages to our drivers. That'll be different than the other applicants. The other thing I want you to consider is the mitigation fees associated with the distribution licenses. Again, it's something we'll pick up again. It is different than the uh, growers in that the distributors are reliant upon uh, the growers to be up and operating for us to do business. So it is different. I know in our application we proposed in year one to phase in the fees. If, uh, in fact, all the growers are doing business right away, we're all on board with paying all the fees. But, again, without them, we're not in business. Uh, it, it is a different animal than the, uh, the growers in that we're really uh, relying upon them. We have to, our, our role in collecting taxes for the state is different, and I think uh, when we hear that there are five to ten applicants, uh, it's a little surprising in that the idea would be to have one that you can count on to distribute for the growers within the city. It is. Uh, it, it would be surprising if there would be more than one, given that the distributors are reliant upon the entities in here uh, doing the growing, and, and it, I, I'm surprised that there would be more than one ultimately chosen and we hope we're the one. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Appreciate that. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak? You can only speak one time. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> I don't want to talk nothing about what they're saying. You know, I just wanted to show you the picture that I left on your desk. Mm -hmm. On all of you, that's what I was talking about last week. Okay. Okay, I had to call the police department to take care of it. Uh, they came over and follow up with us that we called in because it was live wires. It was a 220 voltage uh, right there coming out from there. Southern California came down and they fixed it. It took them around four hours to fix. It's, they questioned me about why it wasn't reported. And I told him, well, I gave it to the city council, and they didn't follow up on it. He says, well, you know, if somebody would have gotten hurt, some, you know, a lot of young kids go by there. If there would have been, you know, one of them that touched those wires, they would have died right there. And there we go, another lawsuit for the city, okay? And that's basically, uh, you know, that's why I talked to you, Shannon, last week. I talked to Sam. And you guys didn't follow up. For something like that, you guys have to follow up right away. If I call Manny for do to do something to a park, he follows up right away. Within four hours, he calls me back. Okay? So that's something that you guys 
I don't come over here just to harass you guys. I've come here because I'm concerned for the community. Okay? So that's about it. You know, have a good evening and have a happy holiday. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. At this point, anyone else? Thank you. <coughs> good evening. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I know you want to get on with the agenda. Um, yeah. Mr. Mayor, City Council, my name is Mark Ramos. I'm President of United Food and Commercial Workers Local 1428. I am here to speak on behalf of Rookley Incorporated. Um, we do have a labor peace agreement with them. We, um, and just so you, I want to make it clear that we didn't rush into this. We actually signed that labor peace agreement back in early October after sitting with Rookley a couple of times because for us, just like, like you guys, this is uncharted territory. We do not want to get involved with an unknown entity. Hearing that Rookley has about 25 years of experience in distribution or, or in transportation was comforting, knowing that they want to pay above minimum wage, um, willing to sit down and talk about health care, a pension, and do everything that is right for the workers and make sure that those workers come from the city of Baldwin Park. The distribution aspect to me is always a very tricky one when product is moving from point A to point B. It's those in-between spaces where you want to make sure that whoever you're dealing with and whoever the city permits to do that is of the utmost character, is doing the right thing, is going to have all the safety protocols in place. And I think Rookley has shown that over, with over 25 years of experience in transportation, they've proven they can do it. And some of those are with governmental contracts all up and down the state. Um, we would also invite any operator who is interested in signing a labor peace agreement to step forward and do the right thing. It's, it's different to sit here and say that we're going to do this, but the proof is in the pudding. Step forward and say we're going to do a labor peace agreement to stand by the city of Baldwin Park, the workers that will come from Baldwin Park, and the community not just in Baldwin Park, in the surrounding region. So thank you very much, and we really hope that you will consider Rookley as for distribution. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that. All right, at this point, moving on with public communication. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Mr. Good evening. Mayor good evening, and City sir. Council. I'm going to make this fast. I just wanted to take this time to thank um, every one of you for this opportunity for us to realize our dreams of owning a cannabis business. Um, this industry has moved forward, um, and I'm so happy that you guys have been open-minded to incorporating and adopting regulations that can, you know, provide jobs and, um, you know, tax revenues and other benefits for the city. Um, as a Latino myself, this is a dream for me um, to aspire for something huge. Cannabis has been a passion for myself. I've been a caregiver for many patients for many years, um, from you know from conditions of chronic pains to multiple sclerosis to a variety of different others. And uh, you know, for me to stand here and to talk to you guys about our business Emerald Connection um, as a distribution cultivation company, um, you know, it's it's an honor. And I just would like to thank you guys and appreciate and would love to ensure to you guys that you know our commitment to work collectively and implement strategies and ideas that can benefit the city as a whole. So thank you very much. I appreciate the time, and thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening, Honorable Mayor and esteemed council. My name is Nicholas Perez. I am the president and founder of both the Inland Empire and California Cannabis Business Association. I do not have an application in because we do not manufacture. We are, in essence, a master referral service. But I first want to congratulate you on your efforts here in the city. Uh, my family has been here in the San Gabriel Valley, mostly Pasadena, since 1721. And I'm oh. a direct descendant of the Gabrielino Indians, so I have strong <coughs> roots here. And I look forward to seeing some of these businesses come here, make a positive impact, not only on the city, but the surrounding areas, and bring real prosperity to your residents and your constituents. I know our membership role is full of businesses that are structured properly with us. They get insurance, they have financing, they have legal services, they have business plan, what you would expect from any single business that's here. And they give back to the community, more importantly. They want to make sure that everything is co-mingled with the local PD and the fire department. No, there's no, no one that's going against the city. There's no one that's going against anything that you guys have here. And simply said, our association and our members are absolutely at your service. Congratulations on your efforts and your progress and look forward to seeing what you guys do. Thank you very much. Appreciate those words. All right. At this point, anyone else wishing to speak in the public communication? Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, fellow council members. Uh, my name is Jasper Rod. I am representing Emerald Connection, which is uh, an applicant. Um, I want to first and foremost thank you all for this opportunity. Um, it really is an honor to be here tonight. Um, I would like to uh, second what Councilmember Garcia said tonight by um, 
accepting all the applicants, I believe that the city would benefit tremendously by allowing all the members who applied to be accepted. You guys would not regret it. I don't think anyone in this room would, um, would what's the word, would let you guys down. I think we're all ready for this opportunity. We've all been waiting and we feel that the city would benefit tremendously. Um, I don't think there's anyone here that is not concerned about safety and public security, but I believe that we will all do our best to ensure that the city and the state as a whole would represent this country in a, in a appropriate and professional manner. So thank you all for the consideration and for your time. And uh, yes, thank you. All right, thank you very much. All right, moving along with public communication. Good evening. Good evening, City Good Council evening. and uh, everybody else, Mayor. Um, so two years ago, about today, I was standing before you asking you guys to regulate cannabis. So I applaud you. Um, it's been a long road. It's been a crazy road for my company. So my name is Jacob Dunn. I represent So Eden Organics. I'm actually the chief executive officer. And I'm here representing two different applicants. Um, one of them is Virginia Avenue Holdings LLC and Therapy Brands. And so um, one of the things I wanted to let you guys know is that we you know we own 40,000. We actually own. We're not renting. We're not, you know, we're not leasing anything like that. We own 40,000 square feet of of actually we we own more than 40,000 square feet me and my associates. And so one of the reasons why we 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 presented the offer to you that we did is because unfortunately the buildings that we own are broken into smaller units. Um, I think the smaller end units are about 1,500 square feet. And, you know, unfortunately, we have tenants occupying these buildings right now, and we cannot legally just say, hey, get out overnight. And so as a small business, we want to grow into these, these, these units as people leave, as they give up their leases. And so I just wanted to communicate that with you in case you guys were not aware. Um, and at the end of the day, I think So Eden and Therapy Brands, So Eden rep, you know, were rep, represented by Virginia ha Avenue Holdings LLC. You know, we've been fungicide free, pesticide free. Um, we can't really call it organic because there's no USDA certification for cannabis yet, but everything is clean, natural, and a lot of the growers that are getting into this industry, they think they can grow cannabis, they think they could do it naturally. But to be honest, it's actually relatively difficult to grow cannabis without fungicides and pesticides if you do not know what you're doing. And so I just want to say that we are ahead of the game. All these companies are going to be a very steep learning curve to grow 22,000 square feet without uh, microbutanol, which is a very strong fungicide that turns the hydrogen cyanide upon combustion. So a lot of these people, they're used to growing that way, but we're way ahead of the curve. So I just wanted to say that. You know, we will not let you down, and we thank you for the opportunity tonight. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. Okay, moving along with public communication. Honorable Mayor, Council Members. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Sean Zamite, third generation resident of Baldwin Park. Just want to say thank you for bringing this to my city. I am the CEO of Cultivate Group, and I look forward to your decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, anyone else wishing to speak under public communication? All right. Okay, we have. Go ahead. Mayor, City Council, City officials, and fellow residents and uh, community members. My name is David Morgan. I'm the co-founder, along with three of my business partners, of Electric Atom Distribution. We are all four Latino-based residents of the surrounding areas and have born and raised and grown within here. And we understand, you know, the Baldwin Park challenges and things in that regard. You know, what I've been hearing from all of my fellow applicants, I mean, first of all, we've all worked very, very hard. You know, we personally have put together a 92-page report in conjunction with a 22-page supplemental report. And I know we've all equally worked very, very hard for this. Uh, what I will state, I want to just point out a couple of quick key things. All of the requirements that have been set forth in, the, in what it is that's been asked for from the location to security plan to the air quality plan and so on and so forth, all of those requirements were fully compliant and we're ready to, to do business. So our business is a little unique from most of the applicants in that most of the applicants are cultivation and manufacturing. We actually are applying specifically only for distribution. And I won't repeat some of the things that were mentioned, but of course, distribution is considerably different from that of the uh, manufacturing as well as cultivation. 
What, what makes us unique, because as a distributor, our business plan is to, of course, provide that of the traditional services, which of course include that of collecting of taxes and fees. I mean, that's critical and important. And that is a critical role of that of the distributor. Also, uh, you know, secure transportation. I mean, mind you, we're going to be transporting from A to B high value, uh, uh, you know, cannabis product, as well as large sums of potentially of, of cash. So we, we, we have all those things in our, uh, within that of our uh, distribution, within that of our uh, business plan and model, as well as storage and, and many of the other services, the traditional services. But also what makes us unique is our marketing background. So three of the four of us have a combined 40 years of experience in marketing. And our goal is to bring a different approach and to assist not just our fellow uh, Baldwin Park cannabis businesses, if selected, to uh, help with those traditional services, but help them with marketing, because marketing is key and important. And we want to make sure, uh, with that of our full-service marketing uh, background, we can help with that. Uh, a last couple of things I just wanted to mention is from the community perspective. We're big into community, and over the last seven years, we've put together proven uh, community events and we'd like to bring a lot of these community events to that of the city of Baldwin Park. I've outlined and specifically put the specific ideas behind those community events. And you should all have that within your Baldwin Park email, uh, email address. Uh, one last thing that I just wanted to mention really quickly is we believe that competition's good. And I'm not insinuating we should have 10 distributors. But I believe we should be considered uh, that of a minimum of two. Right, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. All right, appreciate that. Thank you. All right, anyone else wishing to speak under public communication? Come, uh, thank you. Good evening, Mayor Lozano and um, City Council. I don't want to take up too much of your Fine. time, but I do want to introduce myself. I'm Valentina Ambarchin of Checkpoint Distribution. Um, as my hopefully future colleague from Electric Atom Distribution said, um, distribution is a whole different beast in the cannabis industry. Um, it requires a skill set that I think that I possess. I am a licensed attorney. Distribution is all about compliance, and compliance is essentially in my DNA. This is what I do day in and day out. Um, cross my T's, check my uh, Dot my eyes. Um, so I think that I am uniquely qualified to lead a distribution business. I think there is room in this city to have more than one distribution business to um, serve the cannabis businesses in Baldwin Park. Um, I also want to uh, state that we are we are definitely committed to the community of Baldwin Park. We will, um, you know, contribute not just financially. Of course, we will have livable wages. Of course, we will have um, benefits. But in addition to that, we want to give back. We want our employees to spend time um, volunteering, which we will pay for um, in Baldwin Park organizations, nonprofits that are located here, um, because we want to better this community. And we recognize that this community and this city council is the reason all of us are here today. And it's the reason why we all have this wonderful opportunity. Um, so I hope that you do consider us. I applaud you um, for being here, for making the progress that you have. Uh, while other cities are still scrambling to figure out what they want to do. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you very much. Annie? Good evening. <clears throat> this is not about whatever they're talking about. <laughs> but <laughs> um, I, I see in the agenda that you're going to approve a resolution for uh, safety, bicycle and pedestrian safety. And one of the things that I like to see is the enforcement of the law about wearing a helmet. Because I've seen so many uh, students going to school and driving, uh, I mean, the bike or a skateboard or whatever it has wheels, and then not wearing a, a helmet. And I know that is a law in California for uh, my, uh, people under 18 years old. And um, until something happens, you know, uh, somebody gets killed, then the police start, you know, doing something. But then they forget, and then it starts all over again. So if you do this, I think one of the components of this which it should be the enforcement of the law. Thank you. Thank you very much. All righty. 
Okay, anyone else wishing to speak on the public communication? Okay, if not, I will now declare the public communication closed. When I, real quick, uh, the gentleman that came up here about the 45,000 square feet uh, uh, structure that will eventually be built, if you were to be selected, then at that specific time, you would get together with our attorney to discuss uh, uh, further, the furtherance of the actual project itself, just so that you know. And the gentleman uh, that also came up here to talk regarding the distribution, uh, and, uh, and I, I definitely recognize that it's definitely different from the cannabis, uh, the, and it should be regulated in a different manner. And that's why it was moved over for Monday, the 18th, besides also deciding other cannabis at that specific time, and or if the council decides to extend the amount of, of, of of, of, in, of applicants at that time as well. So just want to let the person know, and that has been moved over. Um, in reference to Margarita, the, the helmets, uh, Chief, we could play, play something in the actual now, uh, so it goes out to the residents of Baldwin Park so that they're aware and be conscientious of, of safety out in the streets itself. All right, so at this point, we'll go, uh, yes, Council Member. I would like to make um, sure. just one, sure. one comment in regards to what was said between prevailing wages and li oh. living wages. There's a, a huge difference. Big time. Between, and we've got, I'm sure, a lot of union people out in the audience. Prevailing wages are totally different than, than living wages, and I just want to clarify that. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you, Council Member uh, Cruz Baca, reference to that particular subject. All right, so Council Members, we're going, to, uh, going into the um, in the consent uh, calendar. We have items one uh, through uh, seven. Uh, Council Members, wishing to pull any item? Uh, yes. Yes, Council Member Cruz Baca. Um, I would like to pull item five for clarification. Okay, item five. Council Members, wishing to pull any other items? If not, I will go ahead and make a motion to move consent calendar. Cal calendar with exception of item number five. That is my motion. I second that motion. Second. Any objections? Seeing none, so move. All right, so at this point, Council Member Cruz Baca, item number five is accept and authorize the filing of the notice of completion city project number 2017-0205 uh, storm drain improvements at the Francisquito Avenue Ramona uh, block Corax storm drain. That is Council Member Cruz Baca. Uh, yes, and I think that this, uh, my uh, explanation, or I would like to ask, um, I believe it's Sam, you Sam. Yeah, um, I, is this, I believe that this is the corner that gave us problems where you had to come back and ask us for more funding in order to complete the, the because there's something that happened and we, you needed to do further work. Is that it, correct? Yes. Yeah, this is the intersection of Francis and Ramona, which required to be redesigned due to conflicts. Uh, okay. But this has been completed this time around so that we can pay them the balance? Or are, are there going to be – I know that you can't predict. There could be a flood tomorrow, and <laughs> we might have to do the whole intersection again. But I'm saying as to the specifics or whatever the, whatever the agreement and fixing and as long as it took, this is ready to – this is it. And yes. the contract has been completed and the work has been completed so that they can be paid the balance? That is correct. So the um, the work is completed, and now that completes the entire storm drain system for the area, and it's ready to take in storm water. All right. Then I approve. Um, I go ahead and make a motion that we approve item number five, which is accept and authorize the filing of a notice of a completion city project number 2017-0205, storm drain improvements at Francisquito and Ramona uh, Boulevard, Corax storm drain, phase two. All right, I'll go ahead and second. Are there any objections? See not so move. Thank you, Councilmember Cruz Baca. Thank All right, at this point, we'll go over to the uh, City Council acting as successor agency of the community. So we have uh, item, um, <clears throat> the first one, which, uh, SA1, successor agency to dissolve the Community Development Commission of the City of Ball and Parks warrants and demands. Also, SA2, uh, which is successor agency to dissolve Community Development Commission of the City of Baldwin Park Treasurer's Report, October 2017. I'll go ahead and make a motion to pass both items. I second that motion. Seconded by Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco. Are there any objections? I see none, so I'll move. All right, the next one is the, uh, the, uh, the carrier with the, uh, the public hearing. But you know what, before, before we actually go in there, because this is for the cannabis, so let's go. I'm, I'm, can I make a motion? Let's let's remove the the finance and the housing. Then we'll come back to, to this and this because this will be the longer version. So at this point, I will make a motion to recess from the regular city council meeting and go into the finance committee. That that's my motion. Second, any objections? See none. So move. Have it. 
Yeah, uh, no, I'll do that right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Now that we're talking about, uh, I'll do the uh, we're talking about storm improvements and street improvements. Storm I just want to thank, oh, thank uh, Public Works. I saw that the poinsettias had been put up in the monument that's there on Ramona off of the 605 freeway. And thank you so very with the lights and the palm trees. And uh, I, I saw Monty the other day and I thanked him. I had been by there for the first time the other night and it's really beautiful. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so at this point, um, I'm going to open up the uh, Finance Thank Authority. You. So we have consent calendars items uh, one, which is a treasurer's report for October 2017. I'll go ahead and make a motion. Second. Second by Councilmember Monica Garcia. At this point, I will go ahead and make a motion, uh, motion to close the Finance Authority. That is my motion. Second. Second. Any objections? See not so move. All right, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and open the, the Housing Authority. Uh, and we have uh, the minutes, consent calendar items one and two. I'll go ahead and make a motion to pass. Second. Who's second? I did. Uh, Councilmember Cruz Baca, any objections? See not so moved. At this point, I will go ahead and make a motion uh, to adjourn the Housing Authority. That is my motion. Second. Second. Councilmember Cruz Baca, any objections? See not so moved. All right, at this point, we're, I will go back, we're going to go back to the, uh, the cannabis uh, subject. So, excuse me. Mayor. Okay. Okay. Yes. Mayor. Um, yes, Councilmember. Uh, Councilmember, uh, go ahead. Let, let me just get into the the particular area. What, what happened to it? Here it is. All right. So at this point, we're opening up. Uh, allow me just to read it up, the, which is carried from December 6, 2017 meeting, which is the public hearing for consideration of the municipal zoning code amendment by urgency ordinance to modify Chapter 127, commercial cannabis, to increase the number of permits per, uh, permitted from 15 to 20. So that is the previous discussion. So at this point, I will give the floor over to Council Member Monica Garcia. Thank you. So uh, we've had a discussion about the distribution. And so I'd like to make a motion to carry the distributors um, over to the 18th, Monday the 18th. So we can take up that item on as a special meeting. Okay, excuse me. That's so, my motion. So, okay, hold on. There, there's a, there's a, there's separate... a motion. On, hold on. There's a motion on the floor, but repeat, repeat it again. The, distribu the distributors yes. that have applied, oh. we had the discussion um, earlier to go ahead and separate that category from the cultivators and the manufacturers, and we can take that up on Monday, All right. December 18th. Okay, That's December 18th. I'll go ahead and second. Uh, is there any objections? Okay, if not, just to let everyone know, the, the motion that was made by Councilmember uh, Monica Garcia is to have the distribution, those that have applied for distribution only, only uh, will be heard on Monday, uh, the 18th at 7 p.m. Well, and, and I don't think that if well, there we are... we could make additional, so let's go ahead. Yeah, if there are applicants that have indicated they want to do distribution, then they should be carried over to that conversation. Um, that would be my, my suggestion. Wait, hold on, uh, Mayor. I just, just want to understand no, your... Go ahead. your motion at this point so in a sense are you saying you're opening for more applications or we're just continuing with no the site? what what we have talked about is taking the distributors that have, have applied through the process that everybody else applied taking those and putting them in a separate category to be taken up on Monday December 18th I, I would say let's just I, I still think that item needs to be studied more and I would prefer that we just look at it on Monday just to study Right, so we separate. Right, so so that only leaves the um, growers and the manufacturers no distribution uses. Oh, okay, okay. My my preference would be to to hold off on that, and I do it at this point. So I, I would I would just object to your. Um, so let me let me repeat that because there are some applicants here that have requested. A couple of you know distribution plus, I think what is it, um, city attorney? Cultivation, manufacturing, and distribution, Council Member Garcia. So, it, so I would say for any applicant that is proposing distribution, that we take it up all at the same time because, because it doesn't make sense that we would separate some 
you know, for the discussion on Monday and then consider some today. Let's just take all the distributors up on Monday. That would be my motion. Okay. Right, okay. So, uh, the, uh, hold on. Are you changing now your previous? Well, or is that the same? Uh, motion? It's the same motion. It's the same motion. Yeah, I, I would. It, I would object. Just, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Let, hold on. Real quick. So, let, uh, let me allow Councilmember Cruz back, and then we'll go into that real quick. But go ahead, Councilmember Cruz back. I think we need to be more specific. Um, for some reason, um, the the wording leaves it open that there might be some people that might change their mind and add distribution between now and Monday. That concerns me. Um, we need to be very specific in the language and make sure that it's only for the people that have already applied and the applications have been accepted as adding or distribution only. Okay. All right. So are we modifying? Excuse me. Okay. The, so, uh, Mayor, if, yes, if I just saw uh, your clarification. Go ahead. That's okay. Fine. So. Uh, Councilman Baca, you're stating that this, those that have applied okay. only for distribution get moved over to, to the next meeting. Or, or, if they, or if there are those that as of today, we, because from what we, I understand, there's 10 applications now because some of the applicants are included in the cultivation and the, ca and the manufacturing, but the distribution would be separate. So I think that we need to clarify that and make sure that it's only to the applicants that already have applications that were accepted and have gone through the vetting process. Okay, so there was a motion made. I mean, did, uh, okay, there, there, hold, hold on, I okay, there, there was a motion, is there a second? There was a, your, your motion, right? My so at this yeah, point, is my there mo a My motion is to take up the distributors yes. on Monday December 18th and when I when I when I mentioned the distributors I'm talking about distributors only and then also the combination of distribution plus manufacturing plus uh, cultivation okay because right, so it, it makes sense to only to take it up all at one time versus yeah, a little uh, bit here and then a little bit on Monday okay so you made a motion I mean I don't That's agree with motion. that all right, so at this point hold on so there's a mo there's a motion on the floor is there a second Okay, see no second, then the motion drops. So at this, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and continue uh, forward with, with, with the agenda, the actual ordinance itself. And Mayor. Yes, Council Member. Uh, I Monty would Garcia. also like to uh, make the motion that for any of the manufacturers um, and cultivators, separate from the distribution, <laughs> but any applicants that fall under the cultivation and manufacturing, that if they have met the city criteria, that includes the financial and the background check, mm -hmm. as well as you know the um, siting based on you know its proximity to uh, schools and and recreation centers. I would ask that we approve on condition, um, and that would just make it I think fair for all the applicants who have submitted to date. And have complied and um, of course it would be on condition so that it gives the applicants the opportunity to you know really package it all before the permit is issued and that would be my motion okay so there is currently a motion by council member uh, Monica Garcia is there a second Okay, see no second, your motion, your motion uh, does not pass. All right, at this point, uh, Councilman Cruz Baca. Uh, Mayor, uh, what concerns me about that, it's, it's not that whether it's fair or not fair. Mm -hmm. There are still a lot of unanswered questions, especially on some of the sites, which I believe that uh, because of the tremendous amount of uh, applications, our staff has not been able to really take a look at some of those in all fairness. And so I would really like to be able to sit down with either staff or for us to discuss as well on Monday so that we can look at all of the applications fairly and take a good look at everything. And I, I, find, it, I find it a little interesting that Councilmember Garcia is now uh, pushing for everyone to be accepted when she didn't even vote for the cannabis to begin with. So that's just my personal feelings about this. Right. Okay. Mayor, yes. Mayor? Uh, con I, hold on I one more. Con Council Member, we're, gonna, we're going to Council Member Monica Garcia, Thank then you. we'll follow over to Council Member right. Susan Rubio. I think it's only appropriate that I respond to that. Um, this is a, an entirely different decision that we're making tonight, and I'm just trying to promote a process that I think is, is fair for the, for the applicants um, that have submitted and have met the city's criteria. 
And again, it would be a conditional approval so that the applicants would work with our city staff to make sure that you know everything checks out before a permit is issued. And that's my position. Um, my, I made a motion and it failed, and so we move forward. Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you very much. All right. So at this point, um, may I, Mayor? Go ahead. Yes, uh, Councilmember. Well, I just want to echo that because we just, um, from our staff today, we had a lot of information given to us today, and they discussed a lot of the last minute. <laughs> um, information applications and, and it was a lot uh, we started with I think it was like 17 and then we ended up with like 32 and that's a lot of information that we didn't go through so that would make sense had we already vetted every single piece of information but there's a lot of things that need to be cleared so I think it would be a little irresponsible to move ahead with everything when we haven't seen all the information but I also just want to take our community into consideration um, because we heard a lot of uh, people express concern last council meeting, and we want to be mindful that as much as we want to move forward, we also have to be responsive to our community. And uh, as Council Member Baca said, you know, we are willing to move forward, but um, we just need to do it very cautiously. Our community is really important to us. And with that, Mayor, just thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. Oh, no, thank, thank you. Uh, th thank you very much. All right, so at this point, we're going to need a motion uh, for the, well, let me just say, first of all, item A, which is a car carried over from December 6, 2017, the public hearing was held at, uh, on that specific date. So at this point, I will go ahead and make a motion. Uh, Mayor, just was, yeah, the, hold on, because the public hearing was open and closed for input. But yes, go ahead, Councilman. I, I would just like to uh, amend uh, uh, this oh, uh, okay. uh, the, this ordinance uh, to include only uh, item E, which is uh, regards to distances of all specific uh, locations, uh, suggestions, uh, and it describes a matter of, of how to um, uh, take those distances. All right, thank, that's fine. Okay, is that a motion? Is that what that's fine. Motion. Okay, motion. I'll Mr. go ahead. Mr. Mayor, yes. can I clarify Legal that counsel? motion if you don't mind? No, that's fine. Just because this is very important and we have exact language. So, uh, Council, uh, Vice Mayor Pacheco, is your motion to pass the urgency ordinance only as to Section E, distances, E1, which says, for schools, daycare centers, parks, or youth centers, the distance shall be measured in a straight line from the subject building to the closest building on the lot in which the cannabis business is to be located without regard to intervening structures. Is that your motion? That's my motion, correct. All right, so at this point, I'll go ahead and second. Thank you, legal counsel, for that particular uh, assistance. At this point, Mayor, we're, may, yes, May I make one more comment? Yes. And I'm sorry, I failed to, to talk about it earlier, but I just want to thank, because I, I see Mark Ramos, I believe he's in the audience, and we want to thank our union brothers and sisters for stepping up and coming to us, and we really appreciate it. I just want to share out loud that Council Member Chris Baca and I sat for months with our legal counsel, our staff, and our team to make sure that we included all of the suggestions that uh, UFCW had given us at the very beginning. And so we were very detailed in making sure that we expressed our willingness to ensure that our employees are treated fairly, there are good working conditions. And so I think that, if, correct me if I'm wrong, we were able to include most of the points that UFCW gave us in that original ordinance. And so thank you, Mark, for those suggestions. And again, I just want to, I'm sorry? Sylvia. Oh, and Sylvia, I didn't see her. So thank you. And we continue to be committed to making sure that any employee <laughs> is treated with dignity and respect and is treated fairly. So thank you for that, Mayor. All right, thank you. Thank you very Mayor, much. Mayor, point of clarification. I'll, a point of clarification, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to make it very clear that based on the motion by Council uh, Vice Mayor Pacheco, that the number of permits is not being expanded to 20. So the number of permits will stay at 15, even if you pass what? Will stay at 15, even if you pass this emergency ordinance, based on Vice Mayor um, Pacheco's motion. All right. So that's fine. All right. So uh, I went ahead and seconded that. So at this point, uh, point any objections? Okay, see, no objections, well, the motion goes in. All right, so at this point we'll all go to item number nine, which is a request for consideration of approval of development agreements for commercial use of cannabis, manufacturing, cultivation, and distribution. Uh, council members, at this point. Uh, uh, Mayor. Council Member Ricardo Pacheco. First of all, let me just, uh, I want to thank all the applicants uh, that are out there. I mean, you guys are the real heroes. You guys are the ones who should be uh, thanked because you guys 
put a lot of heart and soul into this, a lot of investment and a lot of work. And I've been, you know, I went through all the applications. I read them all. Uh, I know a lot of you just have a lot of heart in this. You know, you've committed yourself to this. You, you know, you put money down for uh, buying buildings and buying equipment and buying just, you know, uh, you know, the fees for the city and everything. And I know that there was a lot of issues just with, with property issues and so many things that uh, that had gone on for you to, to come to this point. So let me just applaud all of you uh, for coming to Baldwin Park and trying to start a business uh, here in Baldwin Park. Uh, all this is, is new to us. You know, you know, uh, we're not all experts. I think a lot, a lot of you are probably more expert than a lot of us. So we had a, a steep learning curve. We had a lot of uh, information to, to intake and understand and to be able to put this ordinance together. So uh, with that, uh, a, a number of us uh, had, or early in the year, we've been at this for about two years looking at cannabis. We had a number of study presentations as, uh, as far as the last year in December. We had something like five presentations where we had mm -hmm. subject matter experts uh, come here to our city council meeting and explain to us cannabis distribution and the whole process. So we really uh, went through all that. Uh, later on in the year, we went out to our community. We had at least one, two, three, maybe five, I think more public. We had public, we had probably about 10 workshops and public hearings. So we went out into our community. We let them know what we're doing. Uh, and we got a lot of input from, from our community members through emails, through just phone calls, talking to us. Uh, I, I talked to uh, the unions actually recently, to Mark Ramos and his, and his staff. And we talked about you know some of their input. And uh, city staff, I think, put some of those that information in, into this ordinance. And uh, may, maybe not to the extreme that our union brothers and sisters want us to do it, but we did include some of that. So uh, we had public hearings about zoning ordinances, where these, uh, your buildings were gonna be input. So we all, we all got out there and did a really good job. And with that, you know, a lot of us, um, there was a lot of applications that all of you put in. It was a big rush sort of toward the middle. And uh, a lot of information that, I, that we read all of your bios, your uh, information about your companies, the product lines that you have, uh, just an enormous amount of, of information that each of you, and each of you are different in different ways, trying to represent the, the products uh, that you all have and all very uh, uh, products that are you know, uh, medical cannabis use, which is, uh, I think, very important. Uh, it's a new area, and I think it's going to be, you know, it, it needs to continue to expand itself and do more research so that we could try to cure uh, uh, more uh, diseases in our community. I don't, I don't think we fully understand it, and I think we need to continue to, to do research in that area and support it. Uh, so I think it's just important that that we uh, that we look at those uh, those areas. Um, we also uh, sat with our staff. I know a number of council members called staff. We vetted uh, the different applications. We looked at different uh, issues uh, in, in, that we either didn't understand or try to understand with uh you know with our staff and um and we had i don't know something like, ended up with about 32 applications uh you know that you know that we looked into you know, hundreds of pages of of just documents uh you know that i had to learn and we spent a lot of countless of hours just you know learning the process and then looking at your applications and we compared or at least you know my my thought was to compare a lot of your applications along with with the ordinances and to see if they met uh, a lot of the the criteria that was uh, in place in the ordinance, and to see which uh, which ones would be uh, acceptable and and, uh, and and met what the city uh, requirements uh, were looking at. So we looked at a lot of different factors, uh, and the ordinance is pretty much spelled out the the goals and uh, what it is we're looking for uh, specifically, so that all of you could uh, have those uh, uh, meet the ordinances. So. Uh, anyways, uh, with that, Mayor, I mean, if I Let me, I, if let me I just could... also, you know, well, one of, first of all, say what Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco has mentioned as well. Of course, we've been through this, and at, at first it was very, as we know, very controversial. <coughs> and I believe that we're probably the only city in the San Gabriel Valley, unless there's another immediate one that has actually gone uh, and through the actual process itself. And, of course, our goal was to try and meet the deadline of, of December the 31st, So, and we're here. Uh, there was five different community meetings uh, that were shared with our community. Of course, City Ball Park, we have 75,000 residents. So we did that through the various uh, media communication and received input <clears throat> from many residents. And of course, 
our ultimate thing is to make certain that the that as we receive the revenues from the, the these particular different businesses here, that we that we place them in a in a in a position by which are going to benefit the city of Bond Park long, long term. Of course, those other cities that are deciding the following year, I think they're going to have a tougher time than we're at. So we are at an advantage. And of course, this is brand new to the city of Baldwin Park. We're excited. Our residents are excited. So at this point, I want to thank all the individuals that uh, partook in, in putting this whole, uh, uh, this whole project together. And city attorney, I know you were inundated with a multitude of different applications. Uh, I want to thank you. Also, uh, your colleagues, uh, David, uh, the attorney, David Olivas, uh, that assisted us as well, and our city manager, uh, Amy Harbin, to the planning, and also Mr. Romo as well. I want to thank all, every one of you. You know, the, oh, yeah, that's right. Almost forgot our, our police chief as well. Uh, so I want to thank you because we did it. We get this for the city of Baldwin Park. And a lot of us have been here for years, and I think combined uh, over, uh, over 100 years easily. And it's an investment to our community. Uh, and on and, uh, and that note, at this point, I'll give the mic over excuse me, to Council Member uh, Susan Rubio. Thank you. And so that's something, and I think it's been said quite a bit here, but we want to make sure that no one has the impression that we are just making a decision tonight. What that means is, as they all shared, we've been doing this for two years, and uh, we have taken our community into consideration. I think all of us, at one point or another, were very vocal against it. Myself, being a teacher, makes it really hard for me to reconcile approving something like this and being a teacher as well. But I can tell you by experience, I have also witnessed how much it's benefited some of our students with epilepsy, ADHD, and of course a lot of our cancer um, residents in the city. So there's a lot of benefits. And uh, so we have all evolved together. Uh, I believe as a team, I believe as a council, unanimously have come to, to embrace it. And uh, so I also want to just share that I don't want anybody to be discouraged because a decision wasn't made today here in your favor. I know there's 32 people and it's very difficult to, to please everyone, but please don't be discouraged. This doesn't mean we're not moving forward with others. It's just the lack of time today has been really not on our side. So thank you everyone who's uh, really considered making Ballon Park your home. Please know that we're committed to, first of all, to our community. We're committed to safety, to the companies. We're committed to working with you. And if you were here last council meeting, you heard me express my desire to ensure that you become good partners with us. Uh, we have a lot of community events, a lot of uh, programs that we've had to cut because of budget deficiencies. And hopefully, you will be a good partner in that area and help us make sure that our community is taken care of. Thank you, Mayor. Thank Mayor, you, Council. Mayor. Yes, Council, uh, 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 Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco. Just also like to add that uh, because we're, we're picking 10 today doesn't mean that we're going to do uh, more uh, in the next uh, few weeks. So we are looking at do more. Just there are so many applications and so much to go through. We're just going to start with uh, at least a few. Also, just want to add that in the process, the Council has also looked at possibly doing different uh, tier levels. Uh, maybe later on we'll start looking at do, doing maybe different types of permits so that everybody has an opportunity uh, to, to do that. But we'll discuss that later on. But Mayor, if I could just uh, uh, make a motion. And basically, I want to I want to oh, just start out by saying. Me. Mayor Pro Tem. Mayor, yes. uh, can we also me. speak? I'm sorry. Yes. Do you have anything to say? Yes. But yeah. can okay. I just make okay. a motion? Uh, hold, yeah. hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Allow, allow him to go. Uh, at this point, we'll go Councilmember uh, Cruz Baca, then we'll go over to Councilmember Monica oh, Garcia. Yeah, Monica, who spoke first, oh, so oh, okay. Go ahead. All right. Okay. Thank you. Either way. Thank you. Um, <laughs> since we're just making comments, I, I thought it was appropriate for me to just state for the record that it is true at the first vote uh, of, the, of this ordinance, I was the sole council member that opposed, and the re two reasons that I cited uh, was because I wanted to see more community outreach in, in the community, and I also wanted to hear from our chief of police as far as a public safety plan. And on that note, I would like our chief to just share uh, some of the, I guess, vetting that has occurred with the applicants just for the public's information. Thank you, Councilmember Monica Garcia. Uh, we've done uh, uh, backgrounds. We've looked over their security plans that have come in, and they've all taken uh, fingerprints that have been sent to Department of Justice. So we're doing a very thorough screening process of all the primary applicants, 
and uh, my staff's working on it diligently, and we have background investigators that are working around the clock. So we're we're doing our due diligence in terms of uh, both the security concerns and backgrounds. Thank you, Chief. That's all I have. All right, thank you very much. Uh, May I oh, just hold on, Councilmember Cruz Baca. Um, I just wanted to thank everyone, as, as it has been repeated, mm -hmm. this was a, a very long process, even though it seems like we rushed or we did it without thinking, but this was something that was very important, especially to me with our community. Um, not only did I ask some of the different faith-based organizations to give me their input of what they would like to see as far as not only safety issues, but of course making sure that some of these buildings or some of these businesses were not near schools or teen centers, parks, uh, places where some of our young people and also some of our adults as well that might feel offended that something is so close to their home or uh, next to their place of leisure. So this has been a long process, like I said, and lots of thought has gone into it. It's not something where I don't think any of us jumped both feet forward in order for us to do this. We learned as we went along. We learned how distribution is so different from manufacturing and cultivation. I learned from a lot of you that are out there the different types of manufacturing, the different types of extraction and what it's used for, what are the ones that, are, that, that have the pure organic or whatever it's called. I learned from a lot of you going back three, four years ago before it even went to the ballot, um, doing research already and figuring out what was going to happen. What are the pros and cons of bringing something to the, like this at this capacity to our community? It wasn't only a financial for me. It was also what is the impact? What type of jobs? Who will need to do the training? Making sure that our, making sure that our employees are treated with like union workers are? What are their working conditions? What are What is their salary? Are they getting prevailing wages? Or are they, are they getting benefits? Or are they just going to be treated, and I'm sorry to say this, but like any other agricultural worker that may not be a part of some of what the unions are doing now. That is extremely important and has been very important in the decisions that I made. So thank you everybody, because it has been a real eye opener for me. Uh, even though some people think because I'm a product of the 60s that I was aware of all of this, but believe me, I was not. <laughs> so thank you very much. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Councilman Cruz. Back at this point, Council Member, uh, Mon excuse me, Susan Rubio. <coughs> well, I just wanted to clarify. At last council meeting, um, again, if you were here, uh, I asked for a city master safety plan and uh, the police department is putting that together. Um, and so we're going to get to see something a comprehensive plan on how we're going to address all the safety issues and concerns. Just want to make sure that, that you all knew that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. At this point, Chief, did you, were you going to say anything or? No? Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, before, before we, we give the mic back to Vice Mayor um, Ricardo Pacheco, I just want to let everyone know because someone had asked. Uh, I want to be very clear. The city of Baldwin Park will not sell cannabis. We do not have any plans to have any type of a, uh, a dispensary in the city. So that's going to be very clear because someone asked me. I forgot to answer that. So once again, we will not be selling cannabis in Baldwin Park, nor uh, think of, of creating or establishing any type of a dispensary in the city. All right, so at this point, we get the mic. Yes, Council uh, Member, yes. Just one thing, um, because the headlines at the Tribune did read that pot shops were coming to Baldwin Park. Uh, yesterday, I was inundated with phone calls. And um, I, I was clarifying that that was not true. Um, I believe that our CEO sent an email to the young lady that wrote the article to sort of clarify. And um, I understand that newspapers need to sell newspapers. Um, but I also want to clarify to our residents, because I don't know if the rest of the council got any calls, but I must have gotten at least 20-some calls from like 7 in the morning till about 10.30. And so I do want to clarify that that does not mean that Baldwin Park is right. being pot shops right. to Baldwin Park. And, and we'll clarify. You know what? Uh, one of the residents that told me about that no longer buys a Tribune and, and quote, it's fake news. We've all heard that around, right? So the, the, unfor the unfortunate part that if, it, if, if it, just the mere fact that they refer to it as pot, right, as pot, if we were an affluent community, it would have been cannabis. And that's the unfortunate part. What happens, 
two minority cities like the city of Baldwin Park, despite the fact that we are a mixed city that has different diverse groups in our city. And the unfortunate and shame and tribute for that. Let's send them a letter. Shame on them for attacking the city of Baldwin Park in that manner. They should they should be much more professional. But unfortunately, they're not because we're not an affluent community and they continue the stereotype. And that's unfortunate. <laughs> Let, 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 let me let me just say one thing to that newspaper. They need to realize that America America is one color, and they should not stereotype. Thank you very much. All right. So at this point, Councilmember Ricardo Pacheco. Okay, Mayor. So I'll make a motion for uh, some of the cannabis companies. Now, let me just tell you that first of all, remember we're we're this is like the first phase. We'll probably do some more. Uh, the fact that we're looking at, at distributors kind of makes, I guess, in a sense, more more permits because we're looking at that sort of separately. And and a lot of this was done with a lot of discussion, looking at a lot of factors of, of the different companies and if they matched what our ordinance was looking for. So uh, I'll make a motion to um, uh, for, uh, uh, let me see if I got it, uh, for number one, Janome. Uh, number can, two. Can you refer? Can you refer them to uh, the seventeen? Uh, oh, seventeen oh one Genome Research. Seventeen oh one. Okay. Seventeen oh two Baldwin Park Tail. Um, let me see here. Seventeen oh seven Clover Leaf. Seventeen oh nine, which is DRO. Uh, seventeen twelve, which is NGFBP. Uh, let's see what's this one here? Okay, uh, 1708, which is Casa Verde, mm -hmm. and uh, let's see here, 10, 17, 1710, which is organic management. Uh, 1717, okay. No, no, hold on. 1710. 1710, okay, hold on. All right, okay, go ahead. Did I say 177? Cloverleaf, I think I said that one. Uh, then. 31, which is, uh, where does 31? Green Health Industries, uh, but that would be contingent, a uh, confirmation of the, of the property ownership and other factors. And I think, um, can you no. He did not say 17. Okay, I said, I said, uh, let me just 1701, 1702, 1715, 1712, 1707, 1709, 1708, 1731, 1710, 17, uh, what is it? Say 1717, Ricardo? Yeah, I think it was, yeah. Can you take it in order, please? No, no, no. That would be helpful. Can you take it in order? Hold on, let me, just. You want to read it, read it over then. Read it over, it's like that one. Okay, let me do it again. I'll try to do it in one order. Uh, 1701, 1702, uh, 1715, 1712, 1717, 1718, 1731, 1710, and 1727. That's my motion, and also I just wanted to add. Um, 1731. That uh, I make a move. Uh, the motion to approve these companies contingent that the city attorney uh, meet with the applicants to finalize the contract. That's my motion. Can I make a substitute um, motion to that? Okay, there's a motion, a substitute motion, which, uh, uh, go ahead. Okay, since, since we've taken, and let me go through this list that you just read. One, two, seven, eight, nine, 10, 12, 15, 31, Based on 27. Council Member Garcia. Could we um, also, I mean, wh why does it have to be 10? Could we look at 5, 14, 17, 18? And I think I'll stop there because that's okay, those were the early applicants. Sure. You, you made a you made a motion, so that's my motion. Okay. okay. Is there a second? Okay. 
There is no second. At this point, it drops. All right. Uh, so this, yes, go ahead. I have, I have a question. Yes. Uh, this has nothing to do with the motion. Um, on, I believe, uh, Vice Mayor Pacheco, you said 1715? Yes. Okay. However, from what I understand, there is no address. Is there? For 1715, is that the one you're yeah, saying? Yeah, this, this was updated. There is, uh, oh, it was oh up, so you do have the... Yeah, you it was do updated. Have the, okay, never mind. Thank you. And if I may make a point of clarification, Mr. Mayor. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Okay, yeah, Vice Mayor Pacheco um, wanted to make clear that you're not making a motion to approve the contracts, but rather to approve these individual applicants subject to finalizing the contracts. So the contracts are not final, and we're not approving any contracts today. And as you mentioned uh, earlier, there are Section 5.9, 8.3, and 3.16 that will need to be changed in the development agreements, and that's not an exclusive list. So I will get together with whoever you're doing in order to finalize these contracts. Is that correct? That's correct, because I made a, portion, a motion to approve contingent that the, you, the city manager, would meet with each applicant to finalize the contract. Uh, excuse me. Uh, um, could we amend your motion by adding, I don't know if that's included. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't quite hear you, uh, uh, legal counsel, um, to include as well that there still needs to be, planning still needs to get out to check some of the oh, yeah. permits right. and yeah. buildings yes. as well, because Absolutely. that's contingent on that as well. Yes. And I think Council Member uh, Garcia had well, brought that up previously. It's contingent that you know, they still need to make sure that all the requirements yes. are met right. all the requirements. according to the ordinance. Well, it, it, yes. it would be in there because they'd have to apply for the permit, right? Okay. So, so right. I just want to make it clear if, I so think that that's we don't have any miscommunication. That's I'm fine. sorry. If, I think that's a great idea. After you're finished, I'll clarify that. Yes, I think that I think that we need to include that as well. That this is contingent upon as well as planning and or planning department, of course, coming out there and checking and making sure that the properties are the 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 footage or whatever from a park or a school or whatever it is, or that they also fit all the requirements in order to move forward. Thank you, Council Member Baca. So the motion is amended if it's voted on after this, but the amendment would be to include that the approvals of these particular applicants are contingent upon final approval from the planning department of all the requirements under the ordinance and contingent upon finalizing the contracts with the city attorney's office. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Okay, so that, that was uh, my motion amended as uh, Councilman Cruz Baca all right, so stated. The, yes, all right, so at, at this point, any objections? No, we'll second. There, okay, the, no, I'll go ahead and second. Any, I'll abstain. Yes, uh, one abstention, okay. At this point, then we're going to go ahead and take roll call. There is one abstention, so at this point, Christy, if you could take roll call. Uh, and, the, and, this, and this is to pass uh, the, uh, the <clears throat> various uh, cannabis groups that uh, Vice Mayor Ricardo Pacheco just passed. So he act made the motion, and we, I second it, and there is a there is an abstention. So at this point, we'll take city. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Mayor, can you clarify? It's that Garcia is abstaining or voting? Abstaining. Um, abstaining. Okay, yes. thank you. All right, the motion was made by Councilmember Baca. Yes. Oh, but, no, no, I made the motion. Oh, oh. I'm sorry. I thought she admitted. Yeah. Pacheco. Motion was made by Councilmember Pacheco. Pacheco and seconded by Mayor Lozano. Let me go and do it. Okay, Councilmember Pacheco? Yes. Mayor Lozano? Yes. Councilmember Baca? Yes. Councilmember Rubio? Yes. Councilmember Garcia is abstaining? Right. Yes. Yeah. All right, one abstention. All right, so the motion the motion passes uh, 4 1. Mayor, may yes. I just uh, clarify something? Uh, yes. Just for the public clarification, we all have these big charts in front of us. We spent a lot of time in closed session going through these charts so everyone has the same information and staff did their due <laughs> diligence, went down the list one by one and so we, this, the discussions were already in length and so I don't want anybody to think that this was just something we did here. Once again we all have this list where staff either told us they didn't meet the minimum requirement. They didn't have control of property. So there's a lot of issues with a lot of things. But nonetheless, we all vetted, um, went by the master list. I just want to clarify there's a master list that we were already discussing. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. So and, at this, yes. And also, uh, uh, and, and I, I just want to add one thing is that it, it um, 
if at all possible and if we could do it, um, whether it's in the near future or in the future, um, small businesses are extremely important to me. Um, that is what has been the backbone, in a sense, of America. And so I think that um, if there would be a possibility in the future for us to look at the different tiers, legal counsel, as we had mentioned before, um, to look at tier one, tier two, and um, also and take into consideration some of our smaller businesses. So that's, that's very important to me to be a, also to look into consideration to help with that, with the different tiers. That's what I was saying. Yeah, I think um, Council Member Pacheco expressed that earlier, and I'm in complete agreement that we need to give everyone, even small businesses, the opportunity. Thank you, Council Member. All right. Th yes. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. So moving it along. I just quickly, yes. I just also Vice want to Mayor. thank the city attorney again for doing an outstanding job. I know you've been overwhelmed by all this work, but thank you for all your work you've done. All right. Okay. So at this point, we're going over the um, the council and council member uh, Susan Rubio has a uh, the particular subject, which is create a young ladies conference for March to coincide with International Women's Day. So at this point, council member. Uh, Susan Rubio. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, uh, as we all know, March is uh, International Women's Day, and this year the theme is going to be Press for Change, and in particular because we're dealing with so many issues that are so important to our young ladies, um, especially with the harassment claims going on in today's society. Uh, the reason I specifically um, suggested these categories is that I already have uh, expert matter uh, professionals that have offered to come and do the conference and we were discussing having financial literacy, sexual harassment, uh, and domestic violence prevention, uh, resume, help, branding, how to teach them etiquette, American versus European. As we know, sometimes these young ladies get hired and they go out to dinner with the bosses or in a conference and they really don't know. It is quite embarrassing for someone that comes from like a low income home or a community where they just don't know what fork goes where. And I think that we need to prepare our young ladies for, for, for tomorrow. And I would love to see if we can put this conference together. And I'm talking to, I'm sorry, um, Parks and Rec, if you can help me organize this. Like I said, I already have all these professionals who've agreed to participate pro bono. And let's partner with the school district because ultimately they can suggest, you know, the young ladies that are seniors uh, and today that would be, uh, that would benefit the most. And maybe we could inc include juniors, depending on what you say is um, a good number. It would have to depend, but I hope that we can all support it. It's really important that we educate our young ladies, and it's important that they're prepared, most importantly. Thank you, Mayor. All right, thank you very much. All right, so at this point, I will move for adjournment of the City Council. Second it. Second. Any objections? Seeing none, so move. Viva Ballon Park. Good evening. <coughs> all right. all in the recycle bin. Thank you.